there was an event that happened about 20 years ago. As a young priest in a new parish, One of my parishioners came to me and told me of a lady that was in an old folks home that was dying. I made inquiries about the lady whether or not she was Catholic and found out that she was. I've never met this lady before that day. I got directions and went to the place, walked to the room, which was filled with people I did not know. except for the one who was my parishioner. The family, they were grateful that a priest came. And I walked to the lady, having found out her name. I said, Elizabeth, my name is Father and I, uh, and I have come to give you the blessings of the church, the sacraments of Christ, if you want them. And this lady who was lying on her bed opened her eyes and looked at me. I said, Do you want the sacraments? She nodded her head. She couldn't talk. And had her made an act of faith. Do you believe all that God has revealed? Christ, your Redeemer, all the Catholic Church teaches, and everything she's nodding her head. I'm thinking to myself, well, besides not really getting much verbally from her, I'm getting a lot more than I thought. Anyways, I proceeded to have her make an act of contrition, saying it for her in her ear, Give her absolution. Give her extra unction. Give her the apostolic blessing. Make sure she had a scapular, a rosary. Pray some prayers with her. And I walked out, and the family, they were full of tears. And they thanked me. And when the one daughter came up to me and said, that was amazing. I go, yes. The ceremonies of Holy Mother of the Church, the sacraments, are indeed inspiring. And indeed give a lot. And she said, well, yes, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm like, oh, what are you talking about? She goes, she has been unresponsive for three days. I said, oh, well, I was wondering, because she was very responsive. Yes, we did, that, that's the amazing part. I said, well...
Christ has that effect regardless of the instrument. And trying to comfort them in their tears and calm them down, I said, just give me a call if it tends to go for the worse. Walking out, I met up with the nurse, and I asked the nurse, I, how sick is that lady? She has hours to live. I really? Wow. And I walked away, and I was astonished. Come 1.30 at night, or thereabouts, I got a phone call. Father is taking a worse. She's going to die. Would you come? I, sure. So I got up, went to the place, and there she was, and you could tell there was labored breathing, the death rattle. And I opened up the ritual and started praying the prayers for the dying after giving her absolution again. And I remember in the ritual it says, Dear Lord, receive the soul of this thy servant, etc. And at that point, she went from time to eternity. I kept thinking about that story through the years, but just recently, especially when I came across this gospel for this Sunday, about how these people brought this paralytic to our Lord. And it says in the gospel that our Lord saw their faith and then forgave the sins of the paralytic. Amazing how that works, isn't it? We can, on account of our faith, be efficacious for the good of another. Let's talk about faith for a minute. What is faith? The Council of Trent says, defines it as, we yield our entire ascent to whatever has been divinely revealed. We accept it. Do we have to know it all? No. Not at all. But we have to want to know it all. Or better yet, we have to want to know him. Because isn't it about him? I believe in God. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit. If you divide the Apostles' Creed, it's about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and their workings with us. Their making of us. Our redemption and our sanctification. We have to want to know them. How do you get to know someone? Well, you have to talk and spend time with them. That's what prayer is. Too many people think prayers are fancy words that come out of a book. Granted, there are sometimes that books are essential to prayer. 
for, for example, the Mass and other prayers. But we must incorporate those higher faculties of ourselves, our intellect, striving to know, and our free will, choosing to accept. Prayer, as you have heard many times, no doubt before, is the lifting up of our heart and our mind and our soul to God. We start stirring up the spirit within us by reading what has been revealed to us in scripture, what the church teaches, the lives of the saints, and how they spent their lives in wanting to know God. And then we must apply it. Application. Our Lord himself tells us this when he says, not he who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does. But in order to know what to do, you have to know how to talk to God. Or better yet, how to let God talk to you. One very essential necessity for right and proper prayer is a word that seems to be foreign in the world in which we live. Almost disdainful. And that word is silence. We need to turn off the computer. We need to turn off the TV. We need to put away our cell phones. We need to lift our hearts and our minds and our souls. We have to want to hear God. Once we put forth that effort, we not only find it beneficial to ourselves, but to others. You know that old saying, you can't give what you don't have. The man who is hateful only can give hate. The man who is selfish only wants to share share stuff about himself. But the man who is of God can share much to the benefit of his neighbor and thus practice that virtue of charity which we hear of in the scripture. But before charity, faith, I want to know. Then we can love and then service is easy. If our love is true and our faith is is sincere. So my dear friends in Christ, as we continue with Holy Mass today, let us beg for the grace to have a true faith Remember I think it was the deaf or the blind man I think it was the blind man he could hear 
And he kept crying out to the Lord when he heard that he was walking by. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the Lord came and said to him, after he persisted in his prayer, what is it that you want? Lord, that I may see. That's a good prayer for us. Let me see the truth. Let me know the truth. Let me want to know you. Give me the grace that as I start knowing you in time, I may spend my eternity beholding and being fulfilled with the beauty of goodness of your person. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.